Hello, everybody. Uh, the game of Dick Breaks and he's King of Gooses. Yes, and we are back with our Carthage Let's Play, Rome 2 DEI. We're just after smashing up that Carpetani army and we're just wiping up what's left of them. We're making sure work of them, if I do say so myself. Yes, because I like to prepare when I take on an enemy. Quite literally. If you think about it. For you, my lord. That I might spend quite a bit of preparation and always try to make sure I just got it right. So I believe our first battle shall be, yes, our new army, Dido's Faithful, attacking Iplake. This is the, I think, only army to have Libyan Peltas instead of Balearic Slingers. Really now? Yes. Go for something a little bit different. Alrighty. Basically, the difference is I'm not using slingers, I'm using javelin men. They can also hold their own in melee. Oh, okay then. But as we see, uh, it, this is a field sally. I don't know what the logic exactly is, but in this case, the, it has been decided that the AI will sally out in the field to fight us instead of fighting in the settlement. And here we see my Libyan Peltasts. They're pretty nifty units. And here we have the rest of our troops, our Libyan Thoreau Spears, our Greek Mercenary Hoplites, our Carthaginian Sigmund Cavalry, other Hoplites, Libyan Phoenicians, you know the drill. Here we have more Libyan Thoreau Spears, Libyan Thoreau Swords, our Iberian Scutari. Iberian Scutari. Eventually, I'll start be using some Ambacti instead. Well, who, do we have? Huh? who do we have as the enemy? Uh, the enemy is basically an Iberian garrison army. So it's a mix of Iberian tribesmen, slingers, swordsmen, and a couple of champions. That's what we're up against. Alright. So we've got a unit of cavalry just moving around there. That's our Kurisi, Iberian mercenary cavalry. Riders, I'll eventually, be, re I'll eventually be replacing them for the Arios Epones. An even better Iberian cavalry unit. Who are they? Uh, they're just kind of a heavier unit of cavalry that from the same population group as the Kurusi because they're mercenaries for Carthage. They're heavier with bigger shields. What kind of shields do they use? Um, kind of probably more oval-like shields. Instead of smaller round Kytra shields that the Kurusi have. Our javelins going up against the Iberian slingers. Yes, uh, our guys are in a bit of a brief skirmish there as our other infantry are moving up. Our Libyan Thoreau swords have moved up first because they're pretty fast. George! And the train's a bit wonky here. Moving up and advancing up the hill. Yes, and now they're charging into a group of Iberian champions. What well, are champions like? They're basically just. We use them to be sturdy garrison swordsmen. Oh, okay then. Then this is all a garrison force. So they're not necessarily meant to be the highest quality. And we have our Libyan Thread Spears attacking our Iberian swordsmen. And it's there with some shafts and javelins. Very pointy endeavor. Men. We have nice guitar fighting some more Iberians. The swordsmen, I believe. Yes. Because they're also being hit by some javelins. Being hit on all sides. And those swordsmen were outed. So did those slingers. Well, they ran with their hinds in between their legs that fast. That's embarrassing. Oh, 
But again, the garrison troops, they don't have very high morale and they're up against some pretty strong troops. But on this side, as we see, my Libyan Tereo swords and Skatari are pinned between swordsmen and champions and the Libyans are beginning to waver. They're all just fresh meat at this point. Mm, would you say so? Well, I guess the Iberians are, but they're a little morale on the end of everything. Not morality, morale. Morale, whatever. The difference. And you see, pretty bloody fight going on. And now my Libyans are beginning to rout. We got some cavalry coming in to charge. I think this is my general with the sacred band cavalry. Those Liberians are useless. Now we have that going on. And now some of them are beginning to rout. Engage. With that going on, now I decide to move my Numidian cavalry to charge into those stingers. We'll make short work of them, no doubt. Oh yeah, stingers are going to be powerful in melee, and the Numidians have a good charge. Here we have another one of the Liberian swords, or champions fighting my guitar. Got that going. Well, from this distance, they don't look as though they're fighting all that much. We've already talked about the animation and stuff in the HP system. This feels it just bears repeating, I'd say. This is all just the weird game limitations, and you don't have players clashing the swords always, and injuries being inflicted, although there is damage being dealt. We've got another blob here. And in the distance we've got more elephants moving. What kind of elephants do we have again? African elephants. Africans, right. If you're Carthage, you've only just got African elephants. That's right, yeah. Whereas if you play as the Saluki, you have access to Indian and Syrian elephants. And if you're the Marians, you just have Indian elephants, but you got more numbers in those units. Where are our elephants? Where are the elephants? Yeah, I don't see them anywhere. Well, they were right by one of those blobs and they're charging in. Oh, okay then. We kind of just skirted past them. See the champions are getting boxed in there. Yeah. My Skatari are charging in. Yeah, the Skatari are pretty great. A good solid unit that I eventually just stopped using. Why? Because I just found that the Libby Phoenician Thorax sword just a teensy bit better start wise and just be a bit more fun to rely on them and um, Bakhti were also quite strong and cool so I just found personal not great need for them in the later stages of the game but they were still perfectly usable I just chose to move away from them. Dinner time! So the elephants are herbivores. And here we, we have our battle have ra has wrapped up, and we have now captured Plakia. Our casualties are pretty minimal. Our hoplites basically weren't engaged, so they didn't take any casualties. A very hefty success, if I do say so myself. Yes. Though I dismantled the two buildings, military buildings in the Plakia, and also dismantled the settlement because it's too high level for me to convert. How can I 
Take seems to be doing pretty well for itself. Now we have a quick scan of the diplomacy to see if we can do anything. But there is nothing we can do, so. We just have a scan of our territories. And we move on to our next turn. The Galaiki, um, Galaiki want a peace treaty, of but I Reply refuse. With a strength. Not worth our time anyway. I plan to conquer them, so. And here we oh, have Oh jeez, our... I never would have guessed. <laughs> and so now we decide to build into black and build the olive oil press. And I contemplate between the homestead and uh, consecrated ground, but I go for the consecrated ground to spread my Punic culture. I also curiously decide to disband my uh, Lusitani mercenary cavalry in favour of another unit. It seems like it's infantry, but seemingly certain somebody cut out what I actually recruited. So I don't know what I decide to recruit. We definitely yeah. starting to get more riots, I've noticed. Yeah, those happen. And we're just having a quick look in our Italian front before going back to Iberia. But the action is. Now we have our next battle. The Friends of the 104 are up against two uh, armies from the Carpatani. Their last stand, if you will. Oh great, we get to deal with the Carpatani again. Yes, um, whilst my army is in fortified position, it appears that they're just, it's a regular old field battle. Really? Yes. Normally, if an army's in fortified stance and they get attacked, it's a fort battle. Sometimes, though, in certain terrains, notably river crossings, that will take over instead and therefore becomes a river crossing battle. This isn't right. the case, but basic principle stands. The terrain was decided that it should be a regular field battle. Right, so who do we have on our side? Well, we have our usual format of our hoplites, a mix of probably Greek mercenary hoplites and Libby Phoenicians. Our infantry is a mix of Libyan Thoreo swords and Iberian Skitari. We have our two Libyan Thoreo spears. We've got a unit of African elephants. We have. Um, Sardinian Spear Archers as our ranged troops. And our cavalry consists of Numidians, our Carissi, and of course I'd say our General's Bodyguard, which has uh, probably just the standard General's Bodyguard cavalry. What so, about so, the Carpatani? Uh, just whatever the Iberian units they have there. I don't know exactly what units they've got. I know they've been units of Balearic Slingers. Don't know the specifics. Calvary soft position there. Yeah, my Dominions are there. I suspect they probably. I don't know. No, I don't think I would have been able to turn off the large armies thing because I didn't have any more extra armies. I was about to comment that it looked like they were just a single stack there, despite them attacking two, so I thought, I, oh, I must turn off the large armies, but no, I wouldn't have because I didn't have any option for that. It's just my one army against their two. Well, we'll just see what happens. At the moment, our forces are going to are getting into position. Resuming their battle stations. Yes. They're slowly advancing, though. That's a that's something. Uh, they're running. It's just. It takes time. Just taking their sweet ass time with it. Well, they're trying to go pretty fast, but you know, it's not that easy. Yep. Yeah. So, DEI's had some more changes, at least I mentioned some, but the Royal Swords have been changed a bit. So now, oh. class is melee skirmishers, a hybrid unit. Oh, their forces are starting to meet up. A little bit. The basic idea is that Thoreo swords, some of them, 
uh, have extra javelins but less HP and less mass and more speed so they're kind of a mix between skirmishers and melee troops which is an interesting speed idea strength, speed over strength isn't necessarily a disadvantage oh yeah it's, it's not like there's a complete disadvantage it's, it's just there are certain changes they're a little bit faster and they have more javelins uh, but their mass and HP have been reduced. Which means our melee capability will be slightly weakened on that level. But they still retain their general stats as far as I know. And this doesn't apply to all Thoreau swords, just the some of the Greek Thoreau swords. Thoreau Poloi Uzonoi, to be specific. Those types. Maybe more will be affected, but so far that's what the update has been. But anyway, so we have some range projectiles attacking our hoplites. They're able to hoplites resist. Hoplites standing strong. Well, forming a nice little wall down there. And the enemy cavalry have charged into the Skichari. The general attacked. Cavalry is making their way around the rear. I'm going to flank them. The generals start to take casualties from javelin fire, and my elephants are charging after them. But then the infantry is smashed against our own. And it's been a rough fight. The winners have never been rough. Near the Mylidians fighting. They're nice oval shields. I like the Thoreau shield, it's kind of neat. I like it. I like oval shaped shields, they're pretty cool. Yeah? Yes. What about the other shields? They're fine, just I really like the oval style Thoreau, so I that. I like it aesthetically. It's your stick, is it? It's kind of like my stick. The Pelte is pretty nice also, it's kind of an interesting shape. Crescent in shape, typically. Reach zone, I suppose. Yeah. But the Greek Thoreos is kind of smaller than the Celtic shield that it's lightly based off of. But yeah. Anyway, so we got our Lydians fighting some Iberians. Things going pretty well, I like to think. The defences are still holding strong. Javelins are flying everywhere on both sides. And my Iberian Caviar fighting their Skitari Epones. So that's something. Indeed. I'm moving my elephants in to attack the enemy. The elephants are here! Yes. It'd be nice when they get the Atlas elephants. That won't be for a while. What advantages do those kinds of elephants have? More numbers, more armor, and javelin guys on top. Oh, that's definitely handy, yeah. But we still can't beat Indian elephants. We can't have everything. We can't yeah. always have nice things. I know, and Indian elephants are definitely nice. Very nice indeed. Especially the Marian ones. Because again, more numbers, and they got archers on them. You can try to are facing heavy opposition there. No, uh, it looks like kind of probably some enemy by Trati against my Libyan Thoreau swords. I don't have Kytrati anymore. I replaced them with the Libyans. Of course you did. Yeah, the enemy's getting enveloped and surrounded. The Midian's chasing down the enemy general. Shattered. Dead. 
like, there's no doubt about that. He's dead. Well, if the unit is shattered, it doesn't always have to mean the general died. Sometimes they can shatter, but the general still lives. But with my, lip, with my Nemidians chasing him down, he's almost certainly dead. Because they're fast. Yukari are holding themselves up pretty well. Yeah, my Skatari, you're chasing him down, the enemy. Ooh, that's quite the kill. Yes. Quite the bloodbath there, if oh, I yeah? do see. Indeed, quite a bloodbath. There's my sacred band cavalry. Going up to join your African elephants. And those are my hoplites. We didn't see much of them in action, but I'm sure they got quite some good action there. And now we got my Libyan to wear our swords. So they probably got some exercise holding off all those soldiers there. Yep. Yeah. So, that went well. Now we're just chasing down the enemy. So we pretty much made short work of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, Trotty are chasing them all. My Carissi are chasing them all. Carissi. Yeah. Carissi, a cavalry unit. Mercenary cavalry. We're getting Carthage Drive Lot and Iberian Cavalry as mercenaries. And of course Numidian Cavalry mercenaries. And probably some Celtic Cavalry, but mostly those two. Okay then. Because again, historically Carthage was very heavily reliant on mercenaries. Which is why we had that unique mechanic in this game. Yep, so we got my Numidians chasing down those enemies. I think it's safe to say their morale is pretty much non-existent at this point. Pretty much. I think in this recording I must have gone back to using OBS. Because I don't see any of the weird overlay stuff from NVIDIA. Or even the little icon down the lower corner, so yeah. Well, that can't be nothing but good news. Well, it's good to use OBS. But yep, so just admiring these guys. Yeah, the hoplites don't look as though they've moved at all, honestly. Well, their job is largely to stay put and endure in any attack. So here we are in the butter field. Let me see the results quickly. The heroic victory. My casualty is relatively light. Of course, the enemy casualty is quite heavy. And with that, the Carpetani have been wiped. Yee! And my Shopet has leveled up. My faction leader, basically. Ooh. So I decided to research legal institutions to get that Empire Maintenance reduction. He led that army that fended off the Carpetani. So I give him a skill and decency to reduce Empire Maintenance. I live to serve the mighty Carthage. Yeah, now I convert to Plaki and I can build level 3 settlements now. So it's a good idea to build settlements here now? Well, it's just more like I can build level 3 settlements because I researched the tech for that. Oh, okay then. So yeah, now I can convert Taras into a level 3 city. Um, looks like I'm aiming to turn it into a Hadasht. Ready for greatness. What's that? A Hadasht? Yeah. Well, it just means, I think, city in Punic. And oh, okay. it's basically just like... You've got three types of settlement options, broadly, for your provincial capitals. One that focuses more on economic bonuses, 
one that does more military bonuses and the other kind of somewhere in between and the Hadash I think is kind of that in between but this is a bit of a simplification but that's the gist of how the settlement system works now we can choose to hire a character And so we see our little overview. And so with that, we are nearing the end of our video. Everything's looking pretty stable. Yes, I need to move this army, the Tusks of Destiny, towards Tarako for a possible war with Massalia. On the move, my lord. I'm also moving this army up closer to fight the Romans. Scourge of Reshef is still replenishing. I try to keep Tara safe. I decided to upgrade the mercenary camp in Africa.